Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to the latest edition of our Into the Vault series. As you know, this is part of our entertainment show and every week in the Into the Vault series, we look at classic movies from all the genres dating back through the decades, whether it's the 60s Western sort of movie, whether it's the 70s or 80s detective series, whether it's uh, sci-fi, action, adventure, horror, 90s, 2000s, up to as far as this present day, whichever movie has left its mark on the industry, which is deemed a cult classic, we look back into the Vault series and we highlight that movie for the upcoming week. And this week, we're heading back to 1990, roughly, dare I say, 30 or 40 years ago at this stage now. We're heading back uh, to one of Arnold Schwarzenegger's classic uh, movies, one of his big all-time hits. Uh, 1990 was the year the movie was Total Recall. It featured Arnold Schwarzenegger, Rachel Ticone, Sharon Stone, Ronnie Cox, Michael Ironside, and our special guest this evening, who played the role of Biddy. You might remember him as the famous mutant uh, taxi driver in um, Total Recall, the one and only Mel Johnson Jr. And I suppose, um, Mel, uh, in terms of Total Recall, in terms of describing it as, as a movie, it's almost like action, adventure, fantasy, sci-fi, a bit of horror. It had all a mixture of genres rolled into one. It wasn't specific uh, horror movie. There was a bit of comedy there was a bit of everything, variety of genres and teams running through the movie, I found. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Uh, that's, I think, one of the reasons why it's remained so popular. And uh, because it, it wasn't necessarily a horror movie, but it had all that action and it had all of the special effects that go on with sci-fi and what was coupled with that. It was probably the last big film, big budget film that was entirely real as opposed to CGI. So all of the effects, all the bombs, all the facial stuff, my arm, everything was real and activated by people in the back moving levers and everything. So it was very exciting for true affectionados of um, that genre to see all that stuff. And I suppose, Mel, one thing that struck me about the movie, normally all these big production Hollywood blockbuster movies are either shot in Los Angeles or New York or Chicago. This entirety of this movie was shot in Mexico City, I do believe, uh, in terms of that. So was that in terms of the casting uh, process, in terms of being involved in that the movie, was that uh, mentioned to the actors that you would have to relocate for to Mexico City for six or seven months for the entirety of the shooting of this movie? Uh, yeah, the entire movie was shot there. I'm sure it was for economic reasons. Uh, it was before Universal SAG influence, so none of us received residuals for the film. So that was a big uh, plus for the producers because the film became a huge hit. And Mexico City's infrastructure was pretty uh, futuristic in itself. Like we used their subway system uh, to move, you know, to have those subway scenes because it was lo it looked like that. The uh, the stairwells and everything had that futuristic look. The plazas that were there. So it worked out very well. And we took over the entire movie studio, Churubusco Studios for those six months. I was there down there, I was down there for uh, three of those six months. And Mel, how did the opportunity come about for you to get cast in Total Recall? Was it a long audition sort of process uh, in terms of landing the role of Benny or was it something that your talent agent uh, or manager got the script and advised you of the role? It was a, uh, a wonderful story how I got this. Um, timing always works out. I w when they first went, put out the first call, I wasn't available to go in. And then I auditioned for this black exploitation film right the day before, and I just thought that was horrible. And then I got the script for Total Recall and I'm reading it and it got to my character and it said, Benny, black jivester. And I went, you're kidding me. And I tossed the script across the room. I really did. And then I said, ah, I'm auditioning for it tomorrow. Let me read it. And then when I read it, I said, oh my goodness, this is a great script. So I auditioned for Paul Verhoeven and Mike uh, uh, Fender, I think the casting director, just the three of us. 
I came back for the um, screen test and Paul was working the camera himself and it went very well, I felt. And usually you hear these things very quickly. I heard nothing. And usually I let it go, but it, that audition went so well. Paul was giving such input, we we're having fun. So I called my agents. I said, you know, normally I don't bother you about this, but what happened with Total Recall? And they called back and they said, oh, oh, an offer is pending. I said, oh, okay. So here's the story. I'm flying down to Mexico. I'm on the plane. And these two little teenage girls walk down the aisle of the plane and they see me sitting on the corner. And now I have not shot a sign, a scene or anything. They look at me and they go, you're playing Benny. And I went, uh, yeah. And they said, we're Paul Verhoeven's daughters and we picked you. So you never know who's in charge of your career. Do you hear me? He showed all of the final choices to his daughters who were the audience he was sort of trying to reach. And thankfully they picked me. I'm sure there are a lot of other reasons to go into it, but you knew that was a major one. And I tell that story to young actors all the time. All you can do is do your best because you have no idea who's making the final decision. Man, so correct me if I'm wrong, this is in the middle of a plane flight. In the middle no of a plane flight on the way to Mexico. So, yeah, so you were in the air, you were in the air. In the air, and these two girls just happened to walk down the aisle of the plane. And they saw me sitting there and they said, oh, you're doing Benny. And I, I said, how do these girls know? They were Paul Verhoeven's daughters and he showed them the screen tests. It was something, it was quite something, revelatory for me, you know, it was a lot of fun. And then one of the great stories doing my research about uh, Total Recall, I don't know if this is uh, true or not, but in terms of the cab and what you're sort of whistling, were you actually whistling the Norwegian national anthem? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't think I even know the Norwegian national anthem. It may have sounded like that, but uh, uh, no, that was not that was not part of that. You know, there are so many myths that grow up around that. Whistling the Norwegian na national anthem, I have never heard that one. That's a good one. No. <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, we'll have to sort of update that in terms of where that uh, that myth uh, came about. And I suppose there were so many drafts. Of the, of the final script of Total Recall done. I was looking at there, over 40 sort of different drafts were, were, were done of the, the actual script and some were some more darker, some had Arnold Schwarzenegger as an accountant rather than a sort of construction worker. And the previous uh, budget team that, went, that took the script, when Arnold came in, he sort of changed it in, in terms of that. So I, I get the feeling Arna was very hands-on from day one in terms of the direction of the movie. It was wonderful to work with Arnold because he is extremely, he's a, he's a burning a brilliant man, very smart, very even-keeled, very witty, very funny, and very knowledgeable about what he wanted, you know, this film lay dormant. I think uh, Sylvester Stallone was supposed to do it at some time, and you know it came to him. The writers were down in Mexico. They were con we were getting new pages constantly. Uh, he was very much not in control, but very much because Paul was very much in control. But they worked very much together, and and Arnold respected Paul, and Paul respected Arnold, and he made it very very easy but very, very funny. I mean, very, like, so if there's no drama going on with the star, there's not gonna be any drama on the set. So, I mean, as far as, you know, emotional fits and carrying on like that, none of that went on. It was an extreme pleasure. And another story, Mel, coming out of the Total Recall, whether this is sort of fiction or not, apart from Arnold and one of the directors, a good lot of the cast got, and crew got food poisoning. Well, it was not necessarily that they got poisoning from the food on the set. It was Mexico. So people were just not ready. They just, you know, when I, every time I went to Cabo San Lucas, I would get sick because your stomach is not uh, prepared for it. So 
would happen is usually at some point you'd have to, if you, and you could be as careful as you want. I mean, but if you're drinking ice cubes, you're drinking the water from, you know, the thing. So it wasn't that the food was very good. I love the food. And I was there for three months eating that food. So I believe I, got, I might have gotten a little sick in the beginning, but then you get used to it. But it was nothing like people were dropping like flies. Mm-mm, no, no. And I suppose, Mel, uh, in terms of your mutant sort of arms, the special effects uh, in terms of that, was that something that was sort of uh, a plastic elaborate thing that, that you sort of put your hand into or something? And it in was terms of an elaborate uh, prosthetic. I had never broken a limb before. So I was never have to do a, a cast. So before we went to Mexico, Rob Bottin had, I was in a full half body cast from my waist all the way up. And then they made it because I kept one arm here, here, and then the fake arm had to go off and I would take it and I would take it from there. So I had, they made a cast of the whole arm and a cast of the hand because when that arm is revealed, it's a wonderful thing because Rob Bottin wanted everything to look real. And since there was no CGI, everything looked real. So my hand was electro electronically moving. And when the scene starts, I take my hand off. So, but what actually is, it is not attached. I'm just holding it there. And when they hold action, I move it away and the fingers move, but they're wired to this arm going down. So you get the feeling that that's down and then we cut, I put that there. And then the whole arm comes up and there are like seven guys behind me moving. So I had to give shoulder choreography. So it looked like I knew what I was, it was fabulous. Everything was real. And Rob wanted, to do, I don't know if you know that you know this is a well. It may it may have come out. Um, Quato, yeah, was on uh, the stomach of the actor, and to get it to look real because Quato's great. His lips are moving. It's I mean he just looks great, and to get that effect. Robo team wanted to build an entire human robot. And Paul said, no, it's just not gonna look real. It's just not gonna look real, it's just not. So Robo team built an entire human robot, put Quato on it and filmed it without Paul knowing. Okay. And showed it to Paul and Paul was furious because he says, who, where's this actor? Who had him do this scene without me being, and Rob said, it's not an actor, it's my robot. And Paul said, keep it in. I mean, because it looked like the real thing. No one suspected, but that was only so the mechanics could get Quato to work. You couldn't cut through the actor's stomach. So to get the mechanics to work, the whole thing had to be a unit. It was magical. It was magical. I suppose, Mel, normally with those big production movies, uh, they're long days, 12, 13 hour shoots. But, but I imagine looking at watching the movie, I've seen it several times myself, uh, in terms of all the makeup and the costumes and the design, I suppose actors probably had to be in even maybe two or three hours even before that just to get all the makeup, all the, the, the costume. And the makeup and costume design team you had must have been top notch. It was great, but it was, it was, the makeup, as far as makeup was con concerned, I didn't wear anything more than this. I mean, for the for the most, because he wanted it to look natural. Our our cameraman wanted natural light. He there were no huge, you know. Even when we were like running through the tunnels, and you know those lights that were going through, and we were going, it was us. If you the next time you notice it we're lighting each other. The flashlights we have 
turn to the actor that's speaking and that's what lights up. There are no lights up above because they created those tunnels from each sound stage to the next sound stage to the next sound stage. They just built tunnels. And so you could use the whole studio was Mars. And it was all the red rock they created. So, you know, I was draw I got there two weeks early by act by scheduling snaf snafu. So I was able to pack practice driving that car, my cab, through those tunnels. And it was a good thing that I did because the stunt guys didn't know how to drive that car. <laughs> And I suppose in terms of some of the actors and actors, actresses that were on the show, obviously Sharon Stone, even back in 1990, was a, a huge star as well. And Sharon was in the sort of first sequence of the movie. I suppose the filming did run for roughly six or seven months. So when Sharon was killed off uh, earlier on in the movie, did she was only there for maybe two months, three months of that shoot, was she? Here's a, that was the wonderful thing about this film. Paul insisted that it be shot in sequence. That's so rare. It is, you know, you shoot so many, I, 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 that's the only film I ever shot in sequence. So it was like shooting a play because uh, everything was in sequence. So Sharon was there for let's say three months if it was this whole six months that we were down there or something because that's the amount of time they were on earth. And then I came, cause I was on Mars and I was on Mars for the rest, second half of the movie. And we overlapped for a week because okay. remember when, she's, when she's on, she comes and says, you know, dear, come on, I'm here. I'm, you remember I'm your wife, you know, and she does that whole thing. That was a week of overlap. And that's how I got to know Sharon Stone because Paul shot that movie in sequence. It was wonderful that, great idea. So we really had a idea of what we were doing, the growth that took place, you know. And I suppose it came out uh, uh, in terms of nobody knew what to expect from Total Recall in terms of its production and not many people taking it up in terms of original script. So was it a sort of pleasant surprise and a shock straight away to the, the reaction in terms of um, the sort of publicity? And uh, did you have a premiere or screening of the movie or was it shown to the cast? We had a, we, we had a cast and crew before the big premiere. And, uh, as, you know, when you go to these things, this was my first really big film. And uh, I remember coming up on the screen. I don't think I saw anybody else on the screen. I'm just waiting for my role, you know, waiting for Benny to come up. I'm not hearing anything. I was quite a, unaware when you're shooting it, you don't, you're not thinking about anything about except what you're doing on as an actor. So I had no idea it was going to become this big thing. Now, you know, Arnold was at his height at this time. So the premiere was so big, it was at two huge theaters at the same time. And the party was at the Griffith Park Observatory. We took over the whole park. All the servers were Martians. They were dressed as Martians that came around. I would, I would be walking around up there. I ran into Sylvester Stallone. I went into Robert, Van, uh, to Van de Klan, Jean-Claude, Jean -Claude Van de All of Arnold's buddies were up there. Everybody, it was, and it was easy. Again, everything was easy. I mean, you know, to no must, no fuss. And I was really obviously pleasantly surprised how well it did and how much of an impression it made and still makes. I, you're calling today. I mean, you know, and it's still, uh, this happens a lot. You know, it happened much more, but it, it, it still has made, because they show it all the time. They show this film all the time, probably because they don't have to pay anybody, but you know, it's, uh, it's a great, it has paid off in so many other ways. And I suppose, Mel, it's it's a busy time for you outside of uh, Total Recall at the moment. I do believe you have some good news to tell all our audience in terms of a, a production yeah. in the pipeline. Yeah, we're hopefully this thing is going to come into New York. Our big hope is that it'll come to Broadway, and it most likely will. This was we did a musical version of Jerry Lewis's old film, The Nutty Professor. And it was written by, it was the last musical written by Marvin Hamlish and um, Rupert Holmes 
was the book writer and he wrote uh, the Pina Colada song and Edward Drood and you know all of that stuff. And I just finished it just last week. That's so this timing was just perfect. We were up in the Algonquit Playhouse in Maine and it was a wonderful production. And you know, the life of the actor, we just keep on keeping on until uh, I have another little project coming up and we just see which one comes first to Broadway, you know. And uh, Mel Johnson, have you ever donned our shores here in the Emerald Isle? Have you ever been to Ireland throughout your lifetime? Uh, they, they, we're trying to arrange it. I have a one man show based on the life of Frederick Douglass. And people have been talking to me about, cause you know, um, he, when he escaped the United States, he went to Ireland and the Irish embraced him. So uh, uh, we've been trying to arrange that. And it's, a, you know, it's a wonderful part of my storytelling, how, you know, how he was received by the Irish when I got there. So that's the only one. I've shot around Europe and other little films and stuff like that, but I haven't been, I haven't been to Ireland yet. And uh, Mel, in terms of your character, Benny, now, let's say they put, there was an encyclopedia, a dictionary as such, made of the movie Total Recon, and they wanted a synopsis of your character, Benny. They left two sentences blank underneath his name. And the talent agent got on to you and asked you, uh, Mel Johnson Jr., to write those two sentences to sum him up. What would you like those two sentences to read? Uh, 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 uh. I would say, Benny was a shrewd character that knew how to take care of himself in a time when that was almost impossible with fun and with wile, guile, and with a twist. He was fun with a twist, and you hate to give out the twist, but it was fun with a twist. And Mel Johnson Jr., before I let you go, have you any sort of unique story for the last 30 seconds that you want to enlighten us from your time on Total Recon? Maybe some memory of uh, uh, interaction with Arnie, Arnold or yes, something that's my, unique to yourself? Yes, very unique, very quick. Um, my first big day of shooting, you know, when since it was in sequence, he gets off, he comes into the whole thing. And I go, hey, man, hey, man, you need a cab? And we're walking together, you know, and I'm from the theater. So I'm looking at him and I'm a little just about need, needing reading glasses. So I didn't have these glasses on. So we're walking and I backed up a little. Cut. Mel, you need to be closer to Arnold. Okay. Hey, man, you need a cab? And you know, he's a little blurry. So I just backed up a little. I went, cut. You need to be close to Arnold. I went, oh, gee, I thought it was. We went again and I moved slightly. Cut, Arnold looked at me. He said, Mel, if you want to be in the movie, you have to stay close to me. The camera's going to be on me. <laughs> and I went, I got it, Arnold. Got it. Right, boom. And I was, and it was just that kind of attitude that was released, we had fun, and we had those kinds of stories throughout the experience. On that note, Mel Johnson Jr., an absolute pleasure talking to you today to relive your memories of playing the character Benny in the much acclaimed two Oscar nominated movie, Total Recall, 1990, a smash hit alongside an all-star cast, uh, Michael Ironside, Sharon Stone, Rich Rachel Ticone, Ronnie Cox, the one and only Arnold Schwarzenegger and our special guest in this week's Into the Vault movie series, the one and only Mel Johnson Jr. Mel, I hope it's a terrific uh, success for you, your production in line at the moment. And please, God, somewhere down the future, we may speak again. But for the moment, Thank Mel you. Johnson Jr., God bless and take care. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.